Hey guys and welcome to part 7 of this tutorial series and on this part we are going to continue with the passing of the request line that we started on the previous section and in this bit we are looking to pass the HTTP method and starting getting together some test cases so we can assert things as we go along so we left the last section at this point where we can detect now the carriage return and the line feed so we are getting this point already now to continue passing the request line, the next thing that we need to do is to start detecting the spaces. So these two bits here, they will allow us to get the method, the request target and the HTTP version. So what is going to happen is as we are receiving the bytes, we will be looking for the SP characters. And when we find them, we straight away pass the data that we received beforehand. And that allows us to detect errors a lot sooner than with the traditional approach. So let's dive into the code and let's start looking for the SP characters. So inside the loop where we read the bytes from the input stream reader, we are going to check if the byte that we are reading is the SP character. And if it is, we process the previous data. And otherwise we need to store that char so it can be processed once DSP shows up. And for that we'll use a string builder as a buffer, which it is to be honest. So let's call it processing data buffer. And let's instantiate it with a new string buffer like this. And inside the else, let's do the processing data buffer dot append and add the byte to it as a char. Cool, now we can add some debugging just to see what's going on. We'll do that here after the line feed. So debug request line to process. And let's pass the argument processing data buffer to string. And let's surround the call of the method with a try catch. And let's give it a run to see what happens. So perfect, we've got an output of our request line but without any spaces and that is fine. So on each space, let's also print the value that is on the buffer and clear the buffer. Let's grab this. Let's go inside here and let's print and clear the buffer. So dot delete from zero and the length of the buffer. Perfect. Let's give it another run. All right, so we've got the get and the request path. Let's also place it here, the debugging line, and give it another run. Okay, so we got the get, the request target, and the HTTP version. So all the items that we need to pass. So let's differentiate each line of the debugger to identify each of the items that we are looking at. And for that we'll use some booleans, so a method passed and we set it as false, and a request target passed set as false as well. And now let's just do some logic over here with those booleans and check if the method was not passed. We want to use this debugging line and just say it's the method and set the method passed as true. Otherwise, if the request target is not passed, then we are looking at the request target. Let's just modify the debug line. So, rec target, and we set the request target passed as true. Let's give it a run. And perfect, we can identify everything except for the version. Let's just add version here. And another run, just to make sure. And good. Now let's work on the passing of the method. And for that, we go to the HTTP request and now modify the setter method, which is package level. And let's make it receive a string as an input. And let's use the HTTP method value off and pass the method name. 
And let's modify the JUnit test case to validate that we get the correct value. Doing an assert equals. And let's actually assign a variable here for the HTTP request so that we have a request object. And on the equals, we get the request get method and compare it with the get method. Let's just change the name of the method that generates the correct case like this and give a test run to see what happens. And it failed. And the reason is because we forgot to pass the method to the request. So let's do it now, request.setMethod and give it the processing string buffer value. And perfect. But now let's create a test case with a bad request line and a bad method name. So let's copy this, create a generate for, the, for a bad method value. Like so. Let's just delete some of these headers. We don't need them. And let's copy the test case, create another one call it request bad method and pass the generate bad test case method name. Like so. Let's remove this assert equals and give it a run. And we have a failure. So the set method throws an illegal argument exception on the value of, of the enumeration. This is a runtime exception, which therefore does not need to be declared, but we can catch it or we rewrite the code to validate each turn. I would normally, in this particular case, just catch it because it's a predictable situation. And in fact, I think a runtime exception on this method was a really bad design choice, but I will rewrite the code. So inside the setter method, we are going to iterate all the values of HTTP method, like so. And we are going to compare the method name with the name of the method. And if it is equal, we assign the method variable with that method. And if it's not, we throw an HTTP exception of not implemented. And let's make this method throw this exception as well. And now, because we are throwing this exception, we need to modify the other methods to throw the exception as well. And let's modify the test cases so that we catch the exception. And in the case of the good request, we fail if this exception shows up. And in the case of the bad method, we fail if it doesn't show up. And we also assert that the exception code is the not implemented code. Let's give it a run. And perfect, all the methods passed. Now let's think about this for a minute. The way we have our code right now, if I was to craft a request with a method name that was, let's say, a million characters long, the code, we would have to actually read everything into memory and only then do a comparison. And that is something that we might not want to do. So let's modify the appending of the buffer to perform some checks there. So if the method was not passed yet, if the processing buffer length is already bigger than the method max length, which we haven't defined yet, And we throw a new HTTP exception with the not implemented code. So not implemented. Perfect. Let's define the max length. And we make it static final. We'll leave it like this, but we don't assign it. And we assign it using a static block. And in this static block, we basically iterate all the names of the methods that we have. So let's create a variable to hold the temporary max value. We iterate now. 
and we compare to see if the method name, the length of it, is already bigger than the one stored at the temporary variable. If it is, we assign the temporary value, the temporary variable with the method name length, and at the end of it, we set the max length to the temporary value. And that's it. Let's now create a test case for the situation. Let's copy this method to generate a bad request. Rename it to two. And let's just give, a, let's just create a, a method with a bigger name than we have on our enumeration. Let's create the test case. So we copy this one. And let's modify the name of it. And uh, let's use the new generator for the request. Let's give it a run. All good, perfect. But now let's create another test case in which we have more than three items in the request line, which is also invalid. So let's create this generator for that case. And let's give it a good method name and just add a bit over here. Let's actually change the method name to request line invalid number of items. Let's create the test case. Let's change the name invalid number of items. Let's use the generator code. And let's just print the uh, print stack lines so that we see what happens. Let's give it a run. And it fails. Because in the parser, we are not taking care of that yet. So let's do it now. So over here on the parser, if we detect another SP and we've passed already the method in the request target, it's obviously going to be an error. So we do an else and we throw a new exception, HTTP exception obviously, and we just say it's a bad request. Let's give it another run. And all the test cases passed, but we haven't asserted the error code, so we'll go and do that now. Assert equals error code bad request. Let's give it another run and everything passes now with no exceptions being printed. Perfect. This is a bit tedious, but this is overall how we going to test each assumption of our parser. Now let's create another scenario where we send an empty request line. But first let's just fix this name over here. Okay. And empty request line. Here we go. So let's delete everything before the carriage return line. Perfect. Let's create the test case. Let's change the name. Empty request. And let's use the generator that we just created. Let's give it a run. And the test case fails because an empty line appears to be valid. Let's check the parser code and make that fix. So if we get to the character return line feed and the method or the request target are not processed, at least we should return a bad request. So if the method was not passed or the request target was not passed, we throw a new exception. And we say it's a bad request. Let's give it a run. And perfect. Also, what about if we send a character return but no line feed? So that is a bad request as well. So let's write that test case. Let's copy this generator.
change the name only carriage return no line feed let's remove this and let's remove the line feed just a small comment to let us see later on what the changes were okay let's write the test case copy this let's use the generator that we just created and let's change the name of the method perfect let's give it a run and everything seems to be working fine so we'll stop here because this video is getting a little bit long already so on the next part we are going to pass the request target and the http version and place those values on the http request i hope you enjoyed don't forget to like and subscribe and all of those things and i'll see you on the next part